In this video we're going to look at the distance travelled by a particle along a curve and it's my intention just to give some examples and that's the main focus of the video but just uh, at the beginning I'd just like to attempt to motivate the formula that I use. So let's imagine we've got some coordinate system here. Okay, like that. X and Y. And our particle is going to follow some sort of curve. Okay. Now, at different points along each point on that curve has its own position vector. And see this, uh, along this curve here, we want to know how far does our particle go? How, how, what's the distance it travels, okay? So let's start with a position vector, and we'll call this point P, okay? And it has a position vector R of T, okay? And then sometime later, at another point Q, okay, it has a position vector R of T, plus h units in time further on. Okay, now the difference between these two vectors is that vector displacement here. Okay, and that would give us the distance between the point Q, a uh, point P and point Q in a straight line. So if we took the vector uh, P to Q as being R of T plus H minus R of T. Okay, uh, and okay, and we can write that out as components, and our components will be um, right X of T plus H. All right, in the I direction plus it's only two dimensional motion here. Uh, y of t plus h in the j direction, okay, that gives us this vector, minus, and then the next vector is x of t i right, plus y of t j, okay. Now, we subtract that, okay, and that will give us if we write that out as x of t plus h minus x of t, okay, that's all in the i direction, plus y of t plus h minus y of t, and that's all in the j direction, okay. Now, if we took the absolute value of this vector, that would give us the distance between the points P and Q. Okay, so that's the absolute value of that. Okay. But that's the distance from P to Q in a straight line. This particle's traveling along this curve here. So it's a very, very rough approximation to the distance traveled by the particle. But we can improve on that. Okay. Um, and if you notice that this, um, the, we, we're going to, we could take, what if we took a whole lot of little displacement vectors along the curve here, okay, took the magnitude of each of them and summed them up, okay? And the smaller those vectors are, the closer they will approach the actual curve that the particle is travelling, okay? As they become infinitesimally small, and then we sum them through integration, we'll get the actual distance travelled along the curve there. So instead of going one single displacement vector from P to Q, if we took an infinite number of them at little positions and we took them infinitesimally small, so that these become truly tiny here, infinitesimally small, and then sum them, what that does is that then will give us the distance along that curve, okay? And this, see how all this error left over here, all this extra gap in here? As we have more and more of these R of T plus H1, R of T plus H2, all these little tiny ones along here, as we sum them all up, and as they go to infinity, and we sum them all, we get the exact actual distance along here, okay? So the magnitude of this would be the square root, okay, of all of this, x of t plus h minus x of t squared plus y of t plus h, minus y of t, all of that squared, okay? Now, 
the way we can do that is if we were to take here if we were to divide these by h squared okay so a, a new line now if we were to divide these by h squared and then have a factor of h out here okay h squared here okay and then here i'm going to have x of t plus h minus x of t all over h squared notice it's still the same thing i'm dividing by h squared because this is h squared but then i've got a factor of h squared out here so that will cancel these out so i'm not adding anything new oops get that y of t plus h minus y of t all over h square that okay and again h squared here but that's a factor of h squared okay now that's great that's great all we need to do now is let's take the limit okay let's take now the limit as h goes to zero so that we now get okay if we now get our length of this curve okay if we now take the uh, the limit as h approaches zero of this whole object that i've had up here before okay but the we're going to and we're going to sum these up so we're going to take the sum of all this okay h squared okay all of this x of t plus h minus x of t all over h square that plus y of t plus h minus y of t all over h square that okay so we take the limit as h goes to zero okay we're going to sum the whole lot all right now <clears throat> as h goes to zero that will give us the limit and the length of our curve becomes as these get infinitesimally smaller and smaller that simply becomes just the integral between our points okay now we're going to integrate this with respect to t okay all right uh, we're going to have some point p q there okay when we do that this actually comes down to the integral all right between p and q the square root okay of each of these objects here we're going to have um okay we're going to have the, we'll take an h square out we get an h out there limits h goes to zero okay we're going to have x dash of t squared plus y dash of t squared okay integrate with respect to t all right and that is just well it's just the integral p to q okay square root dx dt squared plus dy dt squared for two dimensions okay and that becomes the length of our curve all right before if we wanted the length of the vector from p to q in that straight line there we would just take the absolute value of the difference of this position vector at time t plus h minus the position vector at time t take the absolute value of the difference of those two vectors that would give us the distance between those two points but we don't want that we want the distance the particle travels so what happens is we split this journey between p and q up into infinitesimally small little pieces a little displacement vector here another little one another one a little one and what we have is just an infinite number of points between p and q and then we sum each of those little increments infinitesimally small increments that's what integration does okay and it gives you then the distance along the curve the smaller you make these little vectors uh, displacement vectors in here and the closer you get to the true answer and you sum them okay all right so that's what's happening here 
Okay, so there's our the length of our curve is just given by this object here. Once we know the x and y components, this is in two dimensions. In three dimensions, it'll be longer than that. Um, okay, and if you notice, this is really just the components of the velocity vector. We're taking the square root of the square of the components of the velocity vector. And if you remember earlier in our video series, we looked at velocity time graphs. And when we integrated the velocity function, it gave us the area under the velocity time graph, which gave us our distance or displacement. And yet here, these are the components of the velocity vector, squared, summed, square root of the lot. It's the magnitude of the velocity vector, and we integrate that. Okay, now, let's go look at some examples now. So the length of the curve determined by the position vector r of t equals x of ti plus y of tj plus z of tk in three dimensions for um, a for t be equal to greater than a equal to less than b so some time interval from t equals a to t equals b is given by s the distance is the integral a to b absolute value of v of t dt so it's just the integral of that a to b all of this as we just saw in the previous slide now a particle has position vector r of t is 2t minus t squared in the i direction plus 8 on 3t to the power of 3 on 2 in the j direction so we just have motion in two dimensions a find the displacement of the particle from t equals 0 to t equals 3 that's the first thing we did at the beginning so r of 3 minus r of 0 okay well at r equals 3 put 3 into here we're going to get this vector here minus 3i plus 8 square root 3 in the j uh, so that's r of 3. r of 0, put t equals 0 and all of that, it, the whole thing disappears, so we're just at the origin. Okay, take the difference of that, which is just this vector here, minus 3i plus 8 root 3j. Take the absolute value of that, so the magnitude of the displacement is what we're doing, okay, to find the displacement or the distance of the particle. The distance uh, between, uh, the particles travel between r equals 0 and r equals 3 in a straight line. Okay, so we're finding the magnitude of the displacement vector. Okay, so square root of minus 3 squared plus, uh, sorry, the square root of negative 3 squared, and uh, negative 3 squared plus 8 root 3 all squared. Take the square root of that. Square root of 9 plus 192, square root of 201 is approximately 14.18 units. Now, let's find the distance travelled by the particle between t equals 0 and t equals 3. So the velocity vector is r dash of t is 2 minus 2t in the i direction plus 4 times root t in the j direction. Okay, so the distance will be the integral 0 to 3, the absolute value of the velocity vector integrated with respect to t. Okay, so it's the integral 0 to 3 of this object here. Better sort out the algebra first, so expanding that out, we'll have 4 minus 8t plus 4t squared plus 16t. Tidying that up, we have the square root of 4 plus 8t plus 4t squared dt, um, and that becomes the integral 0 to 3 of 2 times the square root of, we're taking out a factor of 2 here, okay, so we're taking out a factor, sorry, of 4, and then when that comes outside, the square root sign becomes 2, so we have 2 times 1 plus 2t plus t squared, that can be written as the integral 0 to 3 of 2 times the square root of t plus 1 squared, okay, uh, which then becomes 2 times t plus 1 dt, Anti-differentiate that, uh, t, t becomes t squared on 2 times the 2 here, so that cancels. We then have 2 times t here. We now evaluate between the terminals t equals 3 and t equals 0. That gives us 3 squared plus 2 times 3 in the first parentheses, minus, well, all that's 0 there. Okay, evaluating that, it's 9 plus 6 is 15. So we have 15 units. So the distance travelled by the particle, its actual distance travelled is 15, 15 units. Whereas before we found that if it, we just took the absolute value of the displacement vectors, r equals, three to, r equals 0 to r equals 3, we just got 14.18. Shows you that was an approximation. The actual distance travelled is 15 units. All right.